Wow, Jen, that was beautiful. Your voice is absolutely breathtaking. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that. So I would like to introduce beautiful Marlon. I have seen Marlon for the first time last year in April. He was busy on a course. I only attend of all the sessions one session and it was his session. This young man really inspired me so much. And then in June, the, the same, almost the same presenters were all, uh, was invited again. And I might double sure to make sure I am with Marlon's um, two and a half hours that you had your session. I didn't want to miss it. And the day I've, I emailed him, I, I messaged him and said, can you please come and talk to us, our beautiful ladies? This is about three months ago, almost four months ago. And he said, yes, I was over the moon. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask Marlon to come and share his story. You ladies will fall in love with him as I did. He is amazing. Thank you, Marlon. Thank you so much, Annette. Yeah, beautiful, awesome lady. Um, yeah, we, we we connected. Um, what 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 event was that? It was the um, it was a summit, eh? Um, and since then, you left such a huge impression on me. Um, big spirit, and uh, really, I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you, everyone, for 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 joining us today. I'm gonna share a little bit about my story. And I'm actually going to try and bring up the slides now. Uh, I'm going to try and share this. You're welcome to share. It's open. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, tell me, can you, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, how does one play? So, uh, is it working? On this Mac, yes, let's do that. Okay. Well, can you see two things here? I think this thing is. Yes. You're looking at my screen, right? Not the screen that I'm. <laughs> oh, let me see. <laughs> Sorry. Let me just try and change this around. Oh, gosh. The technology is. You know, when you, when you use different applications to get things done, um confuses me a bit okay here i'm gonna share again i figured it out this time oh gosh okay let us see what's coming up Marlon. thank you my son if nothing is coming up Can you still hear me? Can I just yeah, we can see what's hear. coming up, Gordon? Okay, great. Sorry about that. Okay, should be sharing now. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Not yet. Can you see my screen? No. Okay. No. Saying can see my screen. Can you see it yet? No, it's still empty. There's nothing. It's still empty. There's nothing. Oh gosh. Like that's strange. It's looking fine just now. Can I can I just make a suggestion, yeah, Martin, If you're open to that. Yes, uh, are you able to see yes, your station from where you are? My what? Are you able to see your slide presentation right now? Yes. Okay, so just a suggestion. Just a suggestion. Maybe you could speak to us from the slides and put yourself back in full yeah. screen if technology is not working. Just a suggestion. Yeah, totally. Great. That's a great idea. It's a great idea because now I'm just looking at the spinning ball of death. <laughs> so, which is not, yeah. which is not, um, 
Okay, I'm gonna stop us here. Okay. Good evening, everyone. I wish I could show you some pictures, but because um, that was the only purpose of that, there's no real words there. Um, we did get to see them. Pardon? We did get to see them originally. Some, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, so, so yeah. Good evening. So, and good morning to some of you. I don't know what what time of the day it is, wherever you are. Um, I'm really excited to be here. My name is Marlon August. Um, I wanted to just share a little bit about about dreaming. When Sanet told me about um, today's, this is what we're going to be talking about dreaming. I firstly was hugely intimidated because all of you ladies are way more experienced than me in life and, and probably can teach me a ton. And like, and I was like, yo, how am I going to share something about, you know, but I, I also realized there's always lessons in everything in life and would, and I'm so blessed to be here to share with you. So um, one of the things that I think would be, that was, that was interesting. Um, I'm, I'm a sportsman, as, as you may have seen. Um, I'm a sportsman. Um, I went to the Olympic games twice um, and for sport of judo. Uh, does everybody know what judo is? Okay, some of us do. All of you do. That's amazing. So, so yes. So judo, judo is a sport that um, you, you throw, you, you, you throw, you arm lock, you strangle. Um, it's an Olympic sport. You don't kick or punch or anything in it. And I fell into the sport at a young age and just never left the mat. It was like the space that, that where I could really express myself. Um, was bad at everything else. Was bad at school. <laughs> was bad at like every other sport in my life. But even though I wasn't really good at judo as well compared to my peers, I just, there was something about getting flung around and throwing people around that I really, really love. And I think these are some of the things people get confused about what am I good at? Where's my place? What am I supposed to be doing? When actually it's just like the stuff that really lights you up at those moments that you just do so effortlessly and other people are like, they don't get it. They would never get it. I'm still involved in the sport. In fact, my coach who, who, who was a great champion, she's no longer in the sport. She still looks at me like, what are you still doing there? But obviously is proud of what she taught me. Um, and throughout my life, it was, I was never, I only really started to peak around about um, 20 years old. And that's when I broke into the national team, into the South African team, and I, and I started to go on trips. In fact, my breakthrough moment wasn't actually that I was any, like, I won a tournament. I actually came second. And then we had this situation in South Africa called um, transformation that they needed to do. Um, like it's almost like affirmative action where they needed to put um, athletes of color into big stage type of situations. And I was put ahead of the guy that actually won the competition. Now, that was an interesting moment in my life because I had to now deal with my own teammates looking at me in, in an undeserved way. And as growing up, I, I had real issues with my self-esteem, who I am, why am I there? I mean, in, in the South African context, the, you know, the, the, the judo is dominated by Afrikaans speaking people. And, and generally, at the time especially, it was like, it, it wasn't really so inclusive, so to speak. So I was like the only one sort of sticking out there like a, th like a sore thumb. And some people didn't like the fact that I, I would beat their children um, and, and would really not like me at all. <laughs> and, but the thing is, sticking it out, I mean, I was doing what I love. And my mom told me something really important. That in her spare time. So I worked with... Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for telling that down. So I learned something really important. It's like my mom used to say to me, because I you should not beat me down, you know, and my mom would just be like, just be a thorn in their backside. You do what you love and just ignore them altogether. And it stuck with me for the rest of my life. It was actually like the thing that I carried with me all the way to Beijing. Now, the thing is, how do you qualify for the Olympic Games? Olympic Games is not something you get selected for. It's something that you have to prove yourself by getting points on the world stage. 
you get points at various co competitions and the only way judo works is when you is with other people so you have to be constantly fighting um you go from competition to training camp competition to training camp the only way it works for you to be playing at a big level is that i most of the time was never home um i'm talking even as a child when there were Easter holidays, when there were any holidays, I was in camp. That was my life. And it's not for everybody, but that was my bliss. And understanding that and really coming to terms with who I am as an individual, like I'm a crazy person. So like, I don't know if you guys have ever, has any, does anyone know Grand Cardone in the room? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. Awesome, awesome. So, so. Um, be obsessed or be average, um, 10x rule, but I like that be obsessed or be average because that one epitomizes what goes on in here because most people thought that I was nuts. How do you not spend time with family? How do you, and, and it continued throughout my life. I went, I mean, I, my, I've, I've been with my wife now. Um, we've been together past 20 years. So straight out of high school, we're together. Um, yes, we're going to have our 10 year anniversary today. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, so thank you. Um, so, so she, so she was like, but she was luckily, I was very lucky that she was also accommodating with everything. And where we went to, it was a place where I would be spending more time out the country than in. And because it's three months out, maybe a month or so in, and then consistently like that. And because we're South African, we don't have the money to support it. You know, I had to take all my money and travel and, and go on, on, on literally backpacking through competitions. That's how I made it. And the only, so the thing is, the trick is like, you, oh, we're always gonna have these, con these problems. Qualifying for the Olympic games, 2008, the only way I managed to do it was about a hundred thousand rand in debt that time on my credit card. Now, if everybody knows, like, you don't want to be like that much debt on your credit card, not know, and not have a way to pay it back. <laughs> you know, uh, I was 26 years old at the time, and I was just like, and they called me up. I'll never forget it. I was, I was sleeping that time on my coach's couch and every single day because I had to move away from work and be totally in that space because it was about a year or so away from the Olympic Games. That was all I could think about. It's all I wanted. And luckily I had a family that, that they were gunning for me as well. They were like, go, go, rooting for me, behind me. And it was really awesome. And I'm sleeping on his couch and I get a phone call. Uh, it's, it's, I, I was, remember it was an MTN um, uh, credit card. They, underwritten by, they were underwritten by Standard Bank at the time. And the man was like, Mr. August, you need to pay. And I'm like, listen, I'm about to travel. I'm leaving the country for about another eight months, nine months. And I'm not going to be able to pay this bill. I will see you when I'm back and I'll settle the bill then. <laughs> he literally was like, wait a second. Are you trying to tell me that you are not going to be paying your bills and you're going to be traveling? I said, that's exactly what I'm telling you, sir. I will be back. And I left. Um, I left to Morocco, lived there for eight months, um, and and managed to qualify. So the, the 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 thing is, it's and I wanted to show you an image because the one picture that was really really crucial was there's a man in that picture by the name of Etsa Madeira. He is a, a good friend of mine in Mozambique, and I've got Mozambican heritage. What ends up happening is, come out of 2008, I decide I can't do this anymore. You know, I need to, I need to pay back my debt. And, and, and because I needed, just give me one second. Sorry, family's making a noise. So, uh, <laughs> so I needed to pay my debt back and I was quite tired because judo is not a funded sport. So I just gave up. I was like, I'm going to quit. I'm not going to do this anymore. Come 2012. I get the bug. I watch the Olympic Games and I'm like, ooh. And my coach calls me up. He says, how old are you now? I'm like, um. And, and I was as old as the, the gentleman that had just won that Olympic Games, 33 at the time. And he was like, don't you think, what do you, I, I was 30 going to be 33 by the, 34 by the time um, the, the next Olympic Games. 
um, 2016 was going to hit. And my coach was like, what do you think, Mona? And I was like, oh, I don't know. We I chatted to my wife, chatted to my family, and everyone was like, go. If you, if you feel like you got it, then you go. So I go back. I actually make the national team. Um, I fought um, in, in the 2013 African Championships, came seventh. Now I'm a lot older, a lot more tired, and a lot more weight. <laughs> um, and what ends up happening is, um, the, the, the national team doesn't quite believe in me. The people that run the show don't think I'm going to make it. And they literally tell me as much and start leaving me out of competition. So what we do, we're like, you know what? Let's change nationality. <laughs> I have, I, at the time I didn't have the passport, but we went and made it happen. I, I mean, we, I mean, I had the, the, the blood c connection, but it wasn't there. So, I mean, this is quite strange to have to change your nationality. We all are part of a nation. We're all part of soil. To shift just because of something else is, is kind of strange. Um, but when you have a dream that's big enough, it doesn't matter, right? Nothing matters. Um, you just want to get, get it done. It ends up happening that, so then I'm in a different stage in my life. Now I'm married got responsibilities, a house, I've got like real things in my life. And now I need to travel and there's not really much money because I'm funneling it all towards now my sport. Interesting thing that just starts to happen when you just tune into something, when you tune into something bigger, when you connect to something that, I don't know, everything, God pushes everything towards making that happen. And the way it happened for me was a great example. So a friend of mine, so, so it's December and we want to go to a competition. It's December, late December, just before Christmas. We want to go to the, we want to go to Italy. For us to go to Italy, we need to get a, a visa to the UK. That was like where we're going to fly out into UK and then get into, because we're coming back through the UK. So that's how we were getting into Europe. The problem is that firstly, I didn't have the money for the ticket. Secondly, um, I didn't have the, the visa. Now you can't, at the time you couldn't apply without a ticket first. <laughs> so I made up a ticket and I gave it to them. <laughs> they, get, they, they accepted the ticket and then I called, I hounded them for like a week because nobody gets their visa in like three days. Remember, it's, it's like literally, it's, it's just before Christmas. So you got the 27th, the 28th, the 29th, the 30th, that visa has to come out because I'm flying on the first. The money only came out literally on the 27th and was due to a, a, a SARS payout through, you know, you got my taxes, got a little bit of a break, got the money, like just enough money to pay for the ticket. I literally, <laughs> I literally said, I, I hounded them and then I get the message, you know, your visa is ready on the 30th. And my, and it was me and a friend and we went, got out, we literally were like, we looked at each other on the plane. We're like, this is destined. It was meant to happen, you know? And, and, and that was just like the beginning of that journey. Just those things that just reminded me um, that when you got a dream, when you want to do something, nothing can stop you. So I'm going to fast forward really quickly. I hope I'm not running over time here because I wasn't paying attention too much to the time. Um, so, so fast forward, I struggled. I was older, slower. Judo is a sport that takes a lot out of you, a lot out of the joints. Uh, 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 it's, it's a very, very hard sport. Um, generally, when you in my category and, and lighter, the younger guys, um, the, the, the younger you sort of step out of the sport. So really your cap is around 30 um, if you're lucky. And I was still trying to do it at the age of 33, 34, and I was getting progressively slower and slower and slower no matter how hard I was training. And I was losing a lot. So every, every competition I went to, I'd lose. And you know, it's hard. You go to a competition and you could lose in the first round. You lose in the first round, it's over. And there's no coming back. You have to, for you to be able to actually continue in a, like you'll have maybe six comp fights in a, in, a, in a competition, but you'll only have more than 
um, three if you win three. So it's really, really tough. And especially in Europe, because that's the only way you can make it. And the, the, so I get this break. I get to a competition somewhere in South America. And because at that stage, I'm based out in, in Hungary. I, I decided I'm going to go live in Hungary for like a good three, four months and fly out from Hungary to um, whatever competition I need to go to because it was much cheaper that way. I go to, I go to South America and my, my, I win my first fight. My next fight is up against a, a, a guy from Cuba. Funny thing is he doesn't make weigh in for some reason. Nobody knows why. And usually they take them off the, 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 the draw sheet because the, the weigh-in is, is literally the day before. So we know who's going to be fighting. But for some reason, they left him on there. So by the time it's for us to match up, I'm standing on the mat waiting for my opponent and nobody comes in. Thank you so much. So nobody comes. I end up winning the match by default. At the end of that competition, I come fifth. That changes everything for me. Why? Because it puts me right in the front. It gives me enough points to put me right up front for the Mozambican national team. It gives me Olympic spot and sponsorship um, because, because Mozambique had these bursaries um, from the Olympic solidarity. So I managed to get that. It paid me $1,000 a month. And that win got me a, a good position at the World Championships that got me to win and then that carried me right to the Olympic Games. I literally was, it was, if you look at it, it's those fine moments, those one-off chances of things happening that you take advantage of and completely changes the trajectory of where you're going. That puts you on the path. But most of the time, it was just literally downhill. I was literally like, coach, I, I, can't, I, I can't handle this because I was traveling by myself it was really hard and, and injuries happen so easily. So, and, and I was literally a coach, I can't handle this. And he's like, just keep going before you know it. And, and he has a saying, he says, just keep trying whatever you can. And one, and when you luck, and if you're, if you're lucky enough, God will touch your left shoulder. He's Bulgarian. So he doesn't speak any proper English and God did. And when that moment happens, you know, things open up. So, I don't think I need to share anything else with you ladies besides, you know, keep dreaming, keep pushing. It's maybe you don't even need to push. I think that whole idea of pushing is, 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 a, is us trying to force things. Sometimes it's just showing up. And when you show up, you never know what could happen. Thank wow. you. Wow, wow, wow. I love it. I love it. Is there any questions for Marlon? So Marlon, my beautiful daughter has got a beautiful saying. She said, God incident, because God orchestrate everything in life. Oh, yeah. And oh, I yeah. always say, if you just take some action, if you take the action, then everything is possible. Yes, Dor? Well, I did have a question for you, Marlon. I love your passion and your energy. That's what I heard from your whole life story. Resilience, when you say don't have to push, you get back up and keep moving forward and um, passion and persistence. So I just heard so many good um, act, um, verbs. But what I was wondering is, oh, my gosh, how did you earn an, in the income to get you to do all of these things while taking care of a family as well? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that question. And so I was very I'm very, very lucky. I'm very lucky to be part of a family that we is hugely supportive. So we, we, I was part of a family business at the time, um, and I was running a lot of the marketing and the sales. Um, so, so the beautiful thing is, like, I could work, I could work wherever I was in the world, um, and that was that really helped. And then um, my wife and I, we ran another business, another brick and mortar business, um, while I was traveling, and we managed to get that business so finely tuned that my wife eventually got bored like in her days she was just like what i uh. <laughs> so yeah so that, that's how we did it we, we we literally started businesses that helped and then i had a family business that also supported me and that's that's how we that's how we managed wow. amazing 
just want to say congratulations, Marlon. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. you're a great example of dreaming and um, self worth. You struggled with that, and look where you are today. And because you can look reflect on how you trusted God and accomplished. That's great. Thank you so much, Dor. Yes, Mandy. Yeah, I just want to follow along the same lines here. Um, lots, lots of information there about uh, lacking self-esteem and confidence, coming to terms with who you were, uh, being laser focused. Judo wasn't a funded sport. Change, you had to change your nationality. But the thing is, no matter how many obstacles, you didn't give in and you gave the greatest reason for it. Yes, God orchestrates everything. And when we put the action behind the words, he steps in and takes us for the ride like nothing else. But your own words to yourself, dream big enough and nothing else matters. And I would like to add to that, nothing and no one else matters. And I can speak to you as somebody who gave up on her dreams to become an Olympic runner, who at the age of 17 was one of the fastest women on the planet running the 100 meters in 10.8 seconds. And because of peer pressure, I was an unbeatable runner. Nobody ever beat me in the 100 meters, the hurdles, the 80 meter hurdles, or the last leg of the 400 meters relay. Nobody ever beat me. And I gave into peer pressure because my mother didn't want me to go to the Olympics and threatened that if I walked out of the door, it would be closed behind me. So I love it that Marlon is saying, dream big enough and nothing and no one else matters. It really doesn't. Don't give up on your dreams. Keep showing up, keep going. I love you, Marlon. So happy for you. Wow. Thank you so much. Wow, Mandy. Yeah. That's amazing. She just summed up everything. And that's our beautiful Mandy. She always does that in another uh, group that she is uh, also part of a television show. Thank you, Marlon. So tell us, how do you feel? Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> so thank you so much. You are welcome to stay because yes. now is our beautiful Dorsten, my beautiful Dorsten. And then after door, it will be Mandy. So my beautiful door. I'm giving it all over to you. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, everybody. And what a wonderful subject to dream. <laughs> Did you know that the Bible's got the word dream in, mentioned in it over a hundred times? So it's God's, design, it's God's design for us to dream and to have hope and a uh, purpose to get up in the morning. Um, why should we dream? So I did a little research on this and a lot of it is based on scripture and, and my uh, heart for the Lord. Uh, but one of the reasons is that um, having a dream and a goal gives us a sense of purpose, of value. It, it definitely gives us a sense of self-worth when we wake up in the morning and have something to look forward to that we know is gonna make a difference. So contributing, it also, it, you're not just contributing, you have a feeling of, accomplishment and um, that, that you are growing, you're learning. Um, we need to have a sense of purpose because it motivates us. Definitely motivates us to keep moving. So that dream that Marlon had is such a great allegory, such a great story um, to tell you about what it's like to have a dream and look at all of the, the, the things that he, Marlon gained from his uh, perseverance. But I love the word resilience because I think that's, we're all here because we're resilient people, right? We don't quit. We keep pushing through and continue to be willing to grow and to learn and um, to achieve because we feel, have a feeling of accomplishment. We've done the work and it just total, it just naturally gives us um, self-worth. So um, what happens if you don't have a dream? Without a dream or a goal, you can get super bored, number one, but you have the potential of becoming depressed. And that's not what God has in, in store for us. He wants us to wake up every morning and realize that he's gonna do something great 
through us. And so one of my favorite scriptures is Jeremiah 29, verse 11, where God says, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans to give you hope in a future. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to dream and, and be excited about waking up in the morning, knowing that you're fully alive, you're contributing, you're growing, you have purpose. It's just a great feeling to have that feeling of accomplishment. So um, that's what I have to contribute about why should you dream? It's really important. And sometimes it takes a little bit of work. If you don't have a dream, I didn't think about that. I just wanted to talk about why you should dream. But if you don't have a dream, then I would say, ask God, pray and ask God to help you see your qualities, your strengths, and to give you something to dream about, to look forward to. So thanks so much for the privilege of sharing. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much. And I must just say my beautiful door, you, you, you know, you have teach me so much about scripture and the wording of the scripture. So thank you. But can I tell you that ice cream video you sent through, that made my day. And I also had an ice cream with the new video I made. I asked for the first time for an ice cream with a cherry, but I only eat a cherry and a little, I think two or three of the ice cream. But I was thinking of you all the way. Uh -huh. So thank you, my beautiful daughter, for giving us a little bit of your beautifulnessness, your awesomenessness. No, my pleasure. Thank you. Oh, thank <laughs> you. And now, my beautiful Manny, it's your turn. So I do apologize. I didn't uh, introduce Dor. Dor is from Omaha, Nebraska. And Mandy, you can just tell as you are from Canada, but you is Ontario. I'm not sure if I pronounce it right. Um, but yes, I'm going to give it all over to you and I'm very excited. I must just say of all the sessions, this one was my favorite because of, of the dreaming part, because I love to dream big time. Never knew I will be an avatar or a hologram and past not a weekend, I was a hologram. So here we go. <laughs> Mandy, all over to you. Thank you, my beautiful doll. Houston, we have lift off. Houston, we have lift off. Woo! Woo! Louis Armstrong becomes the first man to walk on the moon. The dream was real. He lived, ate, and breathed his passion to walk on the moon and not only walk on the moon but to become the first person to set physical feet on the moon did that dream happen overnight when they said houston we have liftoff did that happen because somebody sat there and said okay tomorrow we're going to launch a, a, a rocket ship and we're going to put a man on the moon oh yeah right no way, Jose. What did it take? Well, first of all, Louis Armstrong had to train to be an astronaut. Have you ever seen the, the, the rigmarole that they are put through, the training for years, years? They're turned upside down, inside out. They're, they're strained against the force of gravity and the force of the G-force outside of the universe and they're trained underwater. They are trained to live in an environment that is not hospitable to human beings. But the dream lay in the inhospitable land. The dream lay in the inhospitable land, which represented all the struggles, all the obstacles, all the objections, all the, no, I can't do this. It's too hard. It's gonna take too long. I could die before I get there. It didn't matter. Louis Armstrong saw his dream come to fruition. Thomas, and Ed Thomas Edison, created the first electric light bulb. It took him years. And this is what he said. I did not fail 10,000 times. I successfully created thousands of different ways to reach success. 
I never did a day's work in my life. It was all fun. 10,000 different ways over a long period of time before he got the electric light bulb. I want you all now to think of a car. I want you to think and picture yourself sitting in your car. You've put the key in the ignition. You've put the key in the ignition. What is it going to take to make the car move? It's going to take your action to turn the key to ignite the engine. You can sit there all day. You can have a Ferrari or a Ford Capri. You can have whatever you like, a Porsche. And you can put the key in. You can think, wow, I've got all this money. I'm sitting on all this money and this fantastic engine. And it's, but it's going nowhere until you turn the key and ignite the engine. The car represents the dream. The turning of the key represents the action that we have to take towards the fruition of our dream. And before I get into that just a little bit, I'm going to use an acronym here. The title of my speech today was Ignite Your Dream or Ignite the Dream. So we'll take the word ignite. I'll run through it and I'll explain as I go along. So I is for infuse with passion. We're looking at the word ignite, I-G-N-I-T-E. I is for infuse with passion. No dream, no thing that you want to form, create, succeed with, or see come to fruition happens unless you've got the passion for it. Like he said in his speech, Marlon, nothing and no one else matters. You've got the passion. G is for grab your dream and don't let it go. Like I said, I let my dream go because I caved into peer pressure at the age of 17. I was, like I said, one of the fastest women on the planet in 1976, 10.8 the 100 meters. So grab your dream and don't let go. N is for name your dream and keep speaking it out loud. My dream was to go to the Olympics. I didn't have the money. We lived in a very poor family, my mother, myself, and my sister. My school, my county, my country was going to fund me to go to France to finish my training with a trainer. It wasn't about points back then. It was about being the, the top of your game in whatever sport you chose and running and jumping was the top of my game so they picked up on it from my club from the county from the school from the country they were paying my way everything was laid out for me because I had that much in my dream and I spoke about it I trained it I trained with a person on my back that's how I trained that's how I became unbeatable I is for imagine all possibilities. A dream happens in the imagination. And when does the imagination take place? The imagination takes place in the REM state of sleep. What also takes place in the REM state of sleep? The healing of the body, mind, and soul. So the dreaming, the imagination happens in the sleeping, the REM part of sleeping. So when you go to sleep, imagine all the possibilities to seeing your dream come into fruition. No negatives, no naysayers. It, grab all the possibilities. T is for trust the vision and the purpose of the dream. You have imagined the dream. You have visualized it. Your purpose is to see your dream ignited on fire with passion and come to fruition. E is for exult in the reality of it coming to fruition. You haven't seen it come to fruition. It's in the future, but celebrate it every single day. I see it. I believe it. I'm there. It's my dream. I've got the passion. I'm doing this. No matter what, exult, celebrate, in the reality of the dream coming true. D is for done. I 
did it. It's already done. I'm there. R is for real. This is not make believe. This is not woo woo. This is reality. It is real. E is for exuberance with life. How much do you want this dream? How much do you love your life? How much do you love everybody and everything in your life? How grateful for you are, how grateful are you for all of it? So E is for exuberance with life. We're now into the word dream. D is for done, R is for real, E is for be exuberant with life. A is for appreciation with gratitude. Gratitude for all that you are, all that you have, and everything that you are and have in your life right now. Grateful for what's coming in the future because that dream is a reality. M is for magic moment. So see yourself in the magic moment of your dream. Ignite your dream, infuse with passion, grab your dream, don't let go. Name your dream and keep speaking it out. Imagine all the possibilities. Trust the vision and purpose of the dream. Exult in the reality coming to fruition. Dream, done, real, exuberant with life, appreciate with gratitude, magic moments. Back to the engine in the car. So you turn the ignition, what happens? The spark plugs, the pistons, the, trans, the uh, transmission fluid, the oil, the cogs, the belts. Then you pump the gas and boom, the car starts. And you're like, wow, yeah, now my car's going to take me places. Remember, the car represents your dream. The combustion happens when you hit the gas after turning the key. Everything in that car is prepared. It is taken care of to ensure that your car, your dream runs efficiently. You see that it has regular oil changes. You take it on a monthly highway run just to loosen up all the belts and the gears and the brakes and fully tune it into peak performance. You get it regular checkups by licensed mechanics. I ask you this, are you making regular checkups on your dream? Are you preparing your dream for its fruition? Are you feeding it with the passion? Are you feeding it with the vision? Are you feeding it with the exuberance? Are you feeding it with the belief that no matter what, that vision is coming to fruition? Remember this, you cannot turn the ignition on without the key. What does the key represent? Sit behind the wheel, you put it in. What does turning the key represent? And I know you can't answer me, but I'm asking you to think about that. The turning of the key is the action necessary to ignite the ignition to get the car to run. So the turning of the key is the action you take to start your dream. Have you started your dream today? What is your dream? Do you even know what your dream is? It won't happen until you turn the key of the mind, the heart and the soul and believe in what it is you want to come to fruition. The car then moves once it's ignited. It's already had the preparation. The engine is perfect. It's all tuned up, it's ready to go. You turn the key, the ignition ignites and boom, off you go. The car represents your dream. The car is going to take you to places that you can only have dreamed of getting to. And this is the whole premise behind the dream. However, you can drive that car and it can take you to places, but what have you got to do along the way? You've still got to make sure you've got enough oil. You've still got to make sure you've got enough gas in the tank because you can run that car to empty and then the car, your dream is dead. The car is dead. It's going nowhere. So this is what we have to do with our dream. It's constant daily mental, physical action to ensure that your car works beautifully, to ensure that your dream is real. It is done. 
no matter what else happens because of your God energy and your belief in the creator who has given you that one thing that will change the trajectory of your life. You have the belief, you have the value, you have the hope, you have the dream, it is done. But you still have to take constant action to make sure the car will run and therefore that your dream will run. Never, ever, ever give up on your dream. Never, ever let your car run dry. Do not let anyone or anything cause you to give up on your God-given dream and you will succeed because it's guaranteed it's already done. Wow. <laughs> I, I want to cry because it was beautiful. Thank my, you. My dream to see my grandchildren at the end of the year and when you were talking about the action and everything, I was just thinking when you said done, Mandy, I wanted to cry because yes. I have done the running on the beach. I have done swinging. I have yes, done you it. Have. Now it must just come. So it was beautiful. Wow. I don't know. Thank you. We've got a few minutes. I, I, if I can start with you, Sarah, how do you feel with this beautiful session that we had? amazed thank you so much it's my first time joining so that was amazing the strength behind you mandy was wonderful and then marion your energy was just coming through my screen here it was just wonderful that's all i can say i'm inspired but yet i get that kickback um where i question myself i don't like that you know you have that dream i know my dream i know my dream is worthy of me but I still run into stuff and it, it's, it's frustrating, you know, and I really, that power, that energy needs to flow more strongly when we cannot always implement everything that we want to and just be patient. One day at a time, in other words, is what I'm saying. I will be here. I am a resilient girl and the power of faith and uh, the journey is just that. <laughs> I have to. I, I appreciate your feedback deeply. I'm going to give you one small suggestion of advice. Please. And it's something I've followed for decades. Okay. When these thoughts come in of, oh, no, I can't do it, or I don't have the money or what, that's natural. That's human. And it's also reality. So the first thing to do is to just set, step back, take a deep breath, pause, and breathe. And say to yourself, okay, I acknowledge I don't have the money right now. I acknowledge something, my ego, whatever it is, is telling me I can't do this. Thank you. Thank you for trying to show me the way. I acknowledge you. And then to ask yourself, but does that serve me? And if the thought of I can't do it, I don't have enough money or whatever the thought is that's trying to stop you does not serve you, then you say, thank you very much for trying to be here on my journey, but I'm going to put you on the train and you're going to exit the station because you're not serving me. And I'm telling you, once you've done that 25 times and you do it consistently with every negative thought, your life will change in a matter of minutes. I can attest. Well, thank you. I will work harder on getting that fixture out of my head when it's not warranted. That's for sure. <laughs> wow. Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. And Aretha, and you're on your side, my beautiful one. I was destined to, to attend this today. I totally knew what I expected. <laughs> totally not what I expected. And or much more in every single way. I am blown away. Free here today spoke to me in a way that I needed to hear. My heart is racing because it almost feels like you all are in my, in my life and in my heart and seeing exactly where I've stepped off today. I was coming from another 
another Zoom meeting as I was logging in where the, the, the target had just been raised so high and my heart was beating and saying, can I, should I get off and say, I don't think I can achieve this target. It's actually quite big. But this, this straight after that is just um, like a confirmation that you just go for it. So I am so thankful, so, so thankful. I, I'm grateful. I totally believe I manifested this today. So thank you. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for that feedback. And my beautiful Jessica, if you can just get your camera on for a little while and show the beautiful ladies how beautiful you are, because I know how beautiful you are. How was the experience for you? Jessica? Okay. And then my beautiful Jane? How was it for you? Wonderful to be here and listen to all the words just washing over me about dreams and how we need to pursue them and not let anyone or anything get in our way. So it's definitely a message I needed. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much. And then my beautiful sorry. You always make me think and think and think. And I and Marion, I must just say that you your dream is so touchy that everybody just wants to jump up and join you. The way you spoke about your dream. It was really it was magnificent. Doll, you always fantastic. And Mandy, you gave me things to think about again tonight. You always give me things to think. And I just wish I can get to my answer, but I know it. I know it will come. It will come. And I just want to say thank you for that. Thank you so much. Sorry, and uh, Valerie. Oh, we will. We uh, are going to do the recording in a few minutes, but we almost finished. Um, Jessica, come on, come on, my beautiful lady. Put yourself on the camera. Hello. Hi, we cannot see you and you are beautiful. Hello. Sorry, I'm, I don't know why I'm having trouble with this. Hello. Hi, we can hear you. How was this evening for you? Hi. Okay, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I had so much trouble with my buttons, y'all. I'm so sorry about that. Um, you know what? I really needed this because, well, as you know, you and I talked a little bit last week. It was it's been, you know, getting my business up and running has, I have the dream, but sometimes when you have the dream, it's really hard to keep going because you sort of, uh, you start to feel, you start to question yourself when you wonder if it's going to work or if you're, or if you're crazy or maybe no one's going to buy it or you start having all this self-doubt. So I really needed this. I really, really needed this. I needed to, to just have I needed to be reminded of where I'm going and what I'm doing. And I thank you so much for the invitation because I really needed to be reminded of the direction I'm going in and stop procrastinating because procrastinating is just a way of, of being afraid of, of you know failure when we don't need to be that way because all of us are headed into that into our dreams we're headed into what it is we need to be doing and so i'm encouraged thank you for inviting me and i'm encouraged by all of you and listening to every single person here today that we all have it in us we just need to stop procrastinating so thank you very much wow wow and i am truly proud of what you said thank you so much so i am going to stop recording